Hello and welcome to Nursing School Chronicles, brought to you by the University of Texas Medical Branch School of Nursing. My name is Lauren Homan and I am the recruiter here at UTMB SOM. And it is my honor to be able to chat with current and prospective students. This podcast is a resource that has been created for current prospective students and anyone interested in nursing school. Each episode will cover a different subject. Enjoy! Hello and welcome to UTMB Nursing School Chronicles. I am your host, Lauren Homan, and I am joined today by three amazing student ambassadors, if I say so myself. Uh, can y'all tell your name and the semester that you're in, Morgan? Yeah, I'm Morgan Holford. Uh, I am in my fourth and final semester at UTMB. Yeehaw. Liam? All right, my name is Liam DeVassal, and I am also in my fourth and final semester. Also yeehaw. Mel? <laughs> yes, I'm Mel Zandrick Diamampo, and I'm also in my fourth semester. Mm-hmm. Aww. Aww. <laughs> the light is at the end of the tunnel, uh-huh. and it is bright, <laughs> baby. It's getting very bright. <laughs> future so bright. Oh, yeah. Single um, digits. Yeah. Right? Uh, and speaking of future being so bright, uh, today's episode, we're going to talk about the capstone uh, that these students have to do during their fourth semester, um, and kind of going off of that, transitioning into your role as a new grad nurse and all the stuff that comes with that. Mm-hmm. All the stuff. All the happy stuff. Yeah. All the rainbows and unicorns, right? Mm. Oh, that's <laughs> the one that's there. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I guess, Liam, let's start with you. Where did you capstone at? Just curious. So I had kind of a, a weird route where I was already employed at a Memorial Hermann facility. Overachiever. I know, right? <laughs> um, and they let me capstone there and awesome. then I ended up getting a job there as well so it's just kind of been a you're a rock star a growth through it over right. at uh, Memorial Hermann Southwest awesome Mel where are you capstoning yeah so kind of same thing as Liam I or, already kind of know where I was going to be working at mm-hmm. so I specifically requested to be in a specific unit and okay. I was in HCA um, Clear Lake cool yes what unit um telly but at the end it was uh, it, I, I was assigned to a, a another unit for work okay so but <laughs> that's it was okay. still a valuable experience <laughs> hey yep. that works morgan mm-hmm. where did you cap where are you capstoning yeah here? um i just finished my capstone okay. at uh memorial herman children's in the med center but like liam well like both of you guys i uh had been lucky to have a professional student nurse uh psn job um on that unit mm-hmm. and so uh i got to do my capstone there and then I will be working there in my future job beautiful yeah cool yeah a little dance party (laughs) um so who can really kind of discuss what exactly what is capstone yeah uh capstone is your final clinical placement Mm -hmm. um fourth semester fourth semester so it's the second half of fourth semester and there are 11 shifts total that you need i guess it's not necessarily 11 shifts because some people have a few different hours Mm -hmm. right but i think it's 132 132 hours of clinical experience um and depending on where you are sometimes you have a preceptor that stays with you every shift so sometimes like my I had a preceptor and so I worked her shifts for 11 of those shifts only with her yeah Yeah, I was always with her um and some are less that and more um yeah Yeah, I I can take over for that one uh so mine was just a rotating nurse I They gave me Friday, Saturday, or Sunday nights Mm -hmm. and just told me pick 11 of these out of these 20 or so days. Mm -hmm. Easy enough. Yep. (laughs) And then whatever nurses are there and willing to take a student, they'll just put me with them. Cool. So you get both of those uh, options. It's not really an option. It's based on where you are. Right. But um, you do get to rank where you'd like to be. Mm -hmm. Some people wanted to stay closer um, to UTMB because they were living here or maybe they were moving to their parents' house. And a lot of people focused on location and then a lot of people focused also on um, hospital system. Mm -hmm. I will say it wasn't terribly um, linked to your unit Unit, because we didn't know our units for a long time. Oh, so you were just signing up based off of the organization. Yeah, yeah. So it was um, a lot less unit specific. I think you could do like I want to work like women's services, but that Mm -hmm. could be you know, antipartum, antipartum, postpartum. postpartum. You couldn't actually designate which specific. Yeah, Yeah. I was, I think with anyone who had a, you, with the job element, we were able to uh, put in 
a, um, to a survey that we had a job and se- select if we would like to be where you're going to get placed there for right. capstone. capstone. And so I think uh, that's how all three of us ended up at our capstone placement. Right. That's where we worked because we said, yes, we'd love to be placed there. Right. So we had a little bit of a different journey into actually what our placement was. Awesome. But at the end of the day, um, it's mostly about location and hospital system mm-hmm. in terms of what you're picking. But So capstone is kind of the accumulation of yeah. all the clinicals Everything. and you are yeah. full blown working yeah. like you're a nurse. It's it's yes. as if you're on a, like a new grad orientation, right. mm-hmm. so to speak. You have a nurse, but like, I mean, you're I kind was of behind just you, as right? much. Yeah, I, right. was, I was really uh, leading a lot of the time the interactions right. with the, the parents right. uh, and the family members and uh, they knew me just as well as they knew their nurse that day. Right, so. yep. that's awesome. Yeah. Capstone's pretty cool because yes. it, it really does get you prepared before it feels so different than a regular clinical right, right. it yeah. feels like you're working right yeah. but you don't get paid so man yeah. it's hey, but, like, <laughs> you know. but you get college so sometimes, credit yeah, sometimes i'm like oh it's free labor and then i was like but was it actually helpful labor i don't know like, i think i was helpful but we get paid with knowledge yeah. that's, that's i love uh, that outlook no, mm-hmm. no. Uh, yeah, yeah. he's a glass half full yeah. guy <laughs> <laughs> love it yeah. on the bright side <laughs> <laughs> right um so kind of now transitioning uh, transitioning into your uh first job um when you first started nursing school obviously you had this idea of like when I graduate I'm gonna be this type of nurse what what was that and and did that change and if it changed why did it change like what happened Mel let's start with you yeah, so, like, in the beginning, I really didn't know, like, like what kind of nurse. I just want to be a nurse. Like, I just want to <laughs> be a nurse, just RN, like, right. nothing else. Right, But I had a, an inclination towards, like, working with kids because okay. I was a Sunday school teacher. Oh, yeah. And then I worked for a middle school as a teaching assistant. Yeah. So lots of experience working with kids, also tutoring as well, like, young kids. So right. I, w- I was like, I might be going to be in pediatrics. but. Right. Towards the end, like since critical care is in the fourth semester, so yeah. you don't really know like if you're if you're yeah. gonna you're gonna like critical care until <laughs> the very end, <laughs> right? Yeah. So like I loved like cardiac. I know people sometimes like that's like uh like a uh, no no. You either person. love or you hate it. Uh huh. <laughs> I love. You're a lover. Mm, I'm a the, lover. The heart. Like, <laughs> give me all the hemodynamics. Like, <laughs> but yeah, like all the EKGs, yeah, yeah. fun stuff. But yeah, I kind of shifted towards that. But there's still Something inside me that I might want to try Pete's one day too. So you're not shut off to Pete's, but you sh- are more open. drawn to the cardiac kind of. Yeah, yeah. Around cool. that route. Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you did have a change in heart. Uh, yes, <laughs> in heart. In heart. So <laughs> funny. <laughs> I'm funny. Yes. <laughs> uh, Morgan, what, yeah. what, what, what did you want to do when you came in? Yeah. So I, um, I was a teacher before this, and I think I knew the part of teaching that I would miss was the ongoing interactions right. with my students. And so when I came in, I knew I knew I wanted to do peds. I'm a, I like kids. I don't You've worked with kids. kids. You're don't career. like adults. <laughs> so um, I really want and I knew I was good with parents on and on and on. So yeah. I thought I want I didn't want a short term interaction with a kid I wanted a long-term interaction right. and who you wanted has, to build that relationship yeah okay. who has the most long-term interaction was he or not he monk but any oncology so right. PD onc was what I was really wanting to do and uh was really focused on that um I even w- before going to nursing school I was looking at um like reading to kids in the hospitals like I really oh, wanted to yeah. be with the kids who were stuck there right. and um as I mean when I first went to my first clinical, I was at MD Anderson, um, and I realized that uh, oncology, I don't think, was for me. It just really? was it, it was a long-term thing, yes, but it was really slow yeah. in terms of, like, the the the, the patients were, were kind of, sl- like, if they were deteriorating, it was a really slow process. That's really heavy. Hard. That's it's very really heavy. heavy, especially someone who came from teaching yeah, yeah. mostly healthy it, children exactly. and then that's that's a lot exactly and and it also was um yeah it, it it was very specific to the type of cancer they had it was a lot less uh of a broad overarching and mm-hmm. so 
I realized that wasn't for me, but I knew I wanted to do peds. And then um, when we did our PD rotation, which is our third semester, I got to see a lot of different PD floors, which was great. And mm-hmm. I, I tended towards all the ICUs. But like Mel said, we don't do critical care and do ICUs until fourth semester. Uh, so, so you didn't know if you liked that. So I yet. had a, a little peek into the ICUs and I knew I was the most A-type person. Like, I want to set my pumps and I want you to not touch my pumps ever. Like, <laughs> like, very territorial, very like, uh-huh. I like a like, all, all high acuity, but I do not want chaos right um, so I knew that ER was not my jam right. but uh I, I I thought like I had an inkling that pick you was going to be it and that ended up being where and that's your jam yeah that's my jam I love it um awesome. it's very organized chaos but uh it's high acuity and it's a lot more fast than the the oncology would have been so you like halfway changed yeah, your mind I halfway changed same my population mind. Yeah. But different special unlike kind of, mel right? i'm pretty like when we finished critical care clinicals i was like all right that's the last of my adult patients ever like i'm never <laughs> sayonara I'm not, adult oh, I'm, I'm like i'm all set i never ever needed an adult patient again no more <laughs> Yeah. noted so yeah. don't don't get sick if don't you're not all by morgan <laughs> yeah. she will not take care not of you helpful. i don't know you've got big organs i don't know what's happening <laughs> <laughs> liam yeah. what about you when you started what were you what were you thinking so prior to nursing school i had a little bit of a background as an emt mm-hmm. and so i wanted to go er it felt like the natural progression right um once i got here, I really didn't want to limit myself. I wanted to keep my options open. Wanted open to mind. really exactly right. see what everything had to offer just so I didn't leave anything on the table. I didn't just go back to it because it felt familiar. That's smart. Yeah. Um, but over time I found that I liked something from every department. Oh man, you're like, I like everything. I like everything. <laughs> uh, which brought me back to the ER because you get to see a little bit of Spoiler everything. Spoiler alert, he's still an ER <laughs> guy. <laughs> I'm still an ER guy, yeah. Yeah, I kind of like, I took a long path around and then ended up at the same location. So it's a big circle, like, exactly. It's whole loop. big circle. Yeah. Were you on the beltway? No. <laughs> you know, I might have been. <laughs> now that I think about it. Uh, awesome. So no change of heart for you. Yes and no. So you had an open heart, mind. All the change of heart into stumbling back, back into the into same. It. Exactly. Well, <laughs> I like to think of it as ER is a good place that feels familiar for me to start off. But right. there's something that I learned from all these different departments. So now I won't be scared of looking into those places. Right, you know, right. If I ever get tired, I want to change. I want to do something else. Right. There's something that's nice about really any of the specialties right you're Um, seeing everything exactly and so I can hone in on on what's more important to me at that time that's awesome and I think like even if someone's like oh I want to do ICU it's like well cardiac ICU is not the same as a neuro ICU they are very very different Mm -hmm. and so it, it it ends up being, do you like high acuity and like only one or two patients? Do you like right. lower acuity but more patients? Right. Do you like, uh, like I know people who love cardiac and hate the brain. They're mm-hmm. like, the brain doesn't make sense and vice versa. And so if you don't have like a really strong calling towards like one specific thing, mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of a lot of variety in terms of tumbling and, and learning what you like in clinicals. Sure. And then right. and I... I presume we're not all going to stay at the, our first jobs. No. Uh-huh. So there's going to be a lot of movement in learning I, what you like and what you don't like in right. your job as well. Right. And you'll be surprised to the uh, of the amount of specialties out there. Like, right. Like, yeah, you like can do like anything what Morgan said, like ICUs, there's so many types of ICUs. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. Not just CVICU, neuro, yeah. there's so trauma. Like, well, there's even in cardiac ICUs, burns. I think for our clinicals, for a critical care, I uh-huh. think we... We are, we're all in the same clinical. We saw yeah. like four different types of cardiac ICUs. Like there's, right, yeah. there's yeah. wow, so just cardiac. cardiac. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, mm-hmm. yeah. And so there's such a variety, and yeah, you can you can do anything with nursing. And so it's yeah. I think it's really important. This coming from the person who did the least changing of all, <laughs> right. um, but to be open minded in what you want to do um, and what what you might like. I mm-hmm. I think Liam, you really liked labor and delivery. Surprisingly, yeah. yeah. I really? really? Like yeah, it, awesome. It, well, it felt like the ER is that there was a True. lot going on. It Chaos. Was a lot of, like exactly. women-themed <laughs> ER. But it was yeah. happy, you know? <laughs> Liam yeah. likes the chaos. Yeah, he and do. And screaming ladies everywhere. Like OB yeah. clinical for me was like 
my favorite too. Really? Yeah, I really love, yeah. It's always people really like Obi. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's just so I mean, different than what baby. you. And it is. It's happy yeah. and exciting and life changing. Dramatic, right? Yeah. yeah, it's a whole different world with whole different rules. Yeah. Unlike anything else you'll find, yeah. and that's yeah. cool. And it's, it's special. a rarity, yeah. I think, for nurses that you don't get your that your patient isn't necessarily sick, whereas yeah. most other you're places, taking care of them in a happy right. They're not right. sick; they're just birthing children. <laughs> no big deal. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. So that's yeah. I think it's very cool that y'all all yeah. just have different. Obviously, going into different things mm-hmm. uh-huh. um and liam who's just a all around our all around guy <laughs> going to the <laughs> er <laughs> landing back that's okay yeah. um so i guess going off of that so obviously you all decided what kind of unit you wanted to work on but how did you come to like the organization mm-hmm. uh that you wanted to work for obviously feel free to say the organization yeah. or don't if you're not comfortable that's totally fine but mm-hmm. um how did you land on that work were you like determined, like I, I have right. to go to this organization or were you open? Yeah. Um, so I am going to be at Memorial Hermann Children's at the Med Center mm-hmm. in the PICU. And I knew I wanted PICU. Uh, like once I decided I wanted PICU, I knew that like there's not a whole lot of choices. Yeah, in tr- it's pretty like, limited. There's two large PICUs in Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have one down here. I did not want to end up down here. Sorry. <laughs> um, and so I, I had to really do pros and cons. And the mm-hmm. thing about the med center and the thing about Houston is that you have so many options and right. there's not a bad choice. Uh-huh. And I knew with my PICUs that there was not a bad choice. Top yeah. hospitals in the nation. Yeah. Literally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was. And, and so I had done a lot of clinicals at Memorial Hermann and knew I liked the system. Mm -hmm. And, um, I also had a connection to one of the educators and, uh, knew that like, you know, if I was in the end going to need someone to like put my resume in front of people, I maybe could talk to her. And I I love that you made that point Mm -hmm. when you're in the clinical setting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Build those connections. Cause then when you're looking for a job, look what happened for Morgan. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And so it was kind of a, a matter of, and I think this is something that people really need to think about is when you are at one of the those really big hospitals that have they they do one thing like MD Anderson does cancer right. you know and uh, Texas Children's does children's mm-hmm. when you have those they are a lot more specific on each floor right right mm-hmm. so you're going to have like at MD Anderson when I was there for my clinical it was sarcoma and melanoma mm-hmm. I didn't see anything with leukemia right like it wasn't right. as if I was dealing with cancer I was dealing with this cancer right and in the same way like Texas Children's has um, like different floors of different kinds of ICUs and it's very specific. Right. And I knew because I don't know a lot about what I want to do in turn, I know pick you, but I don't know. I think I like trauma, right? Like I think right. that's what I want, but I wanted to see a lot. Um, I wanted a little bit more general. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I didn't pick Texas children's and it is one of the best children's hospitals in the country. Literally, And yeah. I didn't, that wasn't the one I was going for. Right. I was going for Memorial Herman. And I think that w- it maybe is unique, but I think it really goes down to like, in the end, what are you trying to get out of this? I wanted general because I'm starting out. Maybe later, I definitely want Texas Children's. I don't know. Right. Um, and so I think it's it's one of those things you really have to think about, um, not only where you're going to go, but like what you want out of it because right. you're going to get a lot of different things from different hospitals. Right. Mm-hmm. Liam, what about you? So I didn't stray far from my uh, my hospital that literally. I worked from. Literally. <laughs> um, didn't even stray at all, right? <laughs> But there's two big things that kind of made me more inclined to stay there right. versus trying to seek employment elsewhere. Yeah. So the first thing being it was a community hospital. Okay. Um, it largely serves a population that doesn't have insurance, doesn't receive consistent medical care. Right. It's you know, a very in-need population, and that was something that I really appreciated. It, That's it, awesome made me feel good going to work. Right. Like Fulfilled. Actually, exactly. Helping right. someone who needs help. Right. Uh, and then the second thing that made me stay was the work environment. So if you think about it, you're working three 12-hour shifts a week. It's a long time. It's a lot of time <laughs> you're spending with your work family. Yeah. And, and they become that. They're right. They're like your family away from your family. Literally. Exactly. Right. And so I found a group of people that I really vibed with, I really meshed with, and I, yeah. I really saw myself fitting within the culture there. That's awesome. And so it just felt like a really natural, this is where I'm meant to be. This is 
who I want to be around right. for. Right, and especially for being a first job, you want to find somewhere exactly. where you do, because you are going to feel a little bit uncomfortable at first because you are a new grad nurse. You need to feel safe to ask questions yeah. and feel dumb. Yeah. And if you uh-huh. don't, if you're, if that's not an environment that you feel that way, you're not going to learn as much. No. Yeah. No. yeah. I agree. No, what about you? Yes, yeah, so I kind of took the non-traditional route. Yeah, leave it to you, Mel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I have to be special <laughs> now because um, I'm an international student. Yeah. So um, it's kind of difficult to um, just go straight um, to a specific hospital system that you like. Right. You really have to go through, like, the agency route. Okay. Because, one, you need to have um, somebody to sponsor you. Okay. Not just get employment, but right. – Sponsor, sponsor you to to stay and work here in the U.S. Okay. So that was a factor. But I um, stumbled upon this agency that was like has specialized in in helping international students, un- awesome. nursing international students. No way! Yes, wow. and That's their office s- is just here in Sugarland. It's not oh, somewhere else. So no way! Like, I was like, okay, all right. That totally and worked. Then, and um, and again, I'm such a traveler. I'm just excited with the prospect of, like, you know, going somewhere else. And right. I interviewed to, like, three three hospitals, and um, I chose um, the one in um, Fort Worth. Yeah. Baylor Scott and White. Awesome. Because just um, in our interviews, it was really, like, extremely nice and very right. casual. Like, they... You felt comfortable. Felt really comfortable. Like, they had me meeting even with the charge nurses over oh, there oh, that are, who are Filipino. Like, all right. I was like, Stop, they're asking me so out for that like, karaoke night already. I was like, okay. I, I just You're felt like, where like, do I sign? Yes. Like, <laughs> like, they really passed the vibe check. I was like, oh, my God. Right. <laughs> I mean, they need to, you know, to check me for right. my vibes. Right. Like, right. They, yeah. were like, they were really cool about That's everything. Awesome. Yeah. And, and, yeah. So I was actually, um, first they, um, they hired me for telly. Okay. For med surge telly. Okay. But then... Um, the nurse manager for Telly and for um, Cardiac um, IMU was the same. So right. she was like, "Oh, there's an opening. I don't know if your agency can 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 accommodate this, but right. but if you want to take it, you can." So I was like, oh, "Okay." Like, and yeah, and I was like, yes. <laughs> Let me Duh. get into that. <laughs> right. uh, so, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that's awesome. And and so obviously you're leaving the Houston area, but mm-hmm. um, but even then, um, I know our School has a reputation for producing really good nurses, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I've heard just being out recruiting that when a organization sees someone who has a degree from us, mm-hmm. they're going to be snatched up real quick, right? Have y'all yeah. had that experience of? Yeah, um, I so uh, Liam and I both were PSNs, which uh, I think is a really helpful way hospitals try and... And what is a PSN? Yeah, so that? it's it's a way that hospitals try to get uh, student nurses into the system mm-hmm. ahead of time in hopes of, I think, recruiting them for real-life nursing jobs. And so you're basically a PCT. You work as a tech um, on a PRN basis or a part-time basis, depending on your schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, they know you're a student, and uh, they also... In Memorial Hermann's case, they would give you uh, a couple of shifts where you got to shadow nurses. So you'd work a couple times as like a PCT, and then you'd get a shift where you got to shadow a nurse and right. on and on. Um, but a lot of the hospital systems do it, and I think they use it as an interview process because mm-hmm. what's better than interviewing someone you just found off the street slash saw their resume right. is seeing someone work. work and yeah, so... Absolutely. That has been, uh, I know a lot of people have been able to get jobs straight out of that system. Right. Um, I had a job before a lot of places opened up their applications because mm-hmm. they offered us jobs before right. um, before they they let it open to the public. Right. And so that was really helpful. And I think if it's, if it's something someone can do, it's worthwhile. Right. Um, but when I was in that, that is kind of a tangent, but when I was starting that job, I was with the nurse educators, and they said verbatim that UTMB nurses are some of their favorite nurses to hire. And that says something. And and we're in bright orange. They know who we are. (laughs) So Um, identifiable. So identifiable. (laughs) But they, I, I'm not sitting down at clinical. I'm working. I'm working really hard because Uh I, I know in those settings that it is a job interview, Uh even if I'm not working Uh as a PSN, even when I'm just at clinical, and um about third I really I should have done this third semester because I wanted to do PD but Mm -hmm. 
I started bringing my resume. That's um, smart. Because they're, the hiring managers aren't elsewhere. They're on the floor yep. Monday through Friday. If you don't have clinicals on Saturdays and Sundays, sorry. but Monday <laughs> Leave it in their yeah, mailbox. Exactly, right? exactly. <laughs> but they... Uh, they are there and if you if your nurse likes you and you say hey I'd love to work here they're like yeah and they drag you to the nurse manager because they like you and they want to work with someone who's fun to be around and works hard right and so uh I think we have a really good reputation of being like that and I think that that's something that I hope continues because uh it's helpful for us as students um and I want people whenever I see an orange scrubbed person I have high expectations right Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. we have high standards for our students and y'all live up to it yeah, totally do. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't get hired if you best. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Liam, have you had any experiences with that of, like, being a UTMB and they're like, oh, yeah, we want you? <laughs> I would say mine was a little different. But you were also, you had already been there, so they're like, we I'm want you, there, period, exactly. right? Yeah, but right. I, I have heard the same thing said yeah. in uh, the different places that I've shadowed right. clinicals. That's awesome. Um, People really like UTMB. Yeah. Yes. And you'll have good attitudes too. So that's important. (laughs) So um, I guess obviously, so then the build up to getting your first job, there's a lot of preparation in that, right? So we have resume building, all that good stuff. Y'all want to chat about that? Resumes are something that it can feel overwhelming. I know a lot of people, it's their first time building resumes and they mm-hmm. feel like they don't have anything to put on it. Right. And yeah. it's like, I've just been to school. I haven't done a lot of things and especially things related to medicine. Mm-hmm. Um, but they want to see like who you are. They don't need to see your life story, but they want to see the bullets of like, does this person spend time outside of class doing anything? Right. Right. Yeah. So right. if you're in any organizations, you put them down. If you... Um, if you volunteered, put it down. If you haven't, then you bulk up your clinical experiences. Put those right. down because mm-hmm. you want to have them see that you have had a varied experience because even if you haven't done it outside of school, UTMB is preparing you in a way yeah. that is so beneficial. So right. you need to put it on your resume. I put every single one of my clinical rotations Why not? where it was because yeah. that is the only medical experience I'd ever had. Hello. And, <laughs> right. And but it was so helpful. Right. I will say keep it to a page, but you can fill up a page even if you've had no experience doing anything else. You've mm-hmm. right. you've, you know, came from your parents' house and then you went to nursing school after you got your prereqs, you have enough to put on that that will make you stand out. Right. Because yeah. you did so much being here. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And like any kind of experience is valuable. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like it doesn't have to be medical related. Yeah. But like for me, for my case, like I worked in restaurants and like bookstores. Customer <laughs> service. Customer <laughs> service. Like have you know. ever spoken to people? Put it on your resume. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. like, that's it's what they want to see. Nursing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. So really nursing is not just the skills. It is the, it is the. You have to have a personality. The characteristics yeah. of being a person who can go into a room of a stranger and help them and, and care help. for them. Yeah. yeah. That can shine through in babysitting. That can shine through yeah. in Literally. taking care of your grandma. Like Literally, anything. Yeah. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. 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 Liam, what about you and your resume building experiences? Have you had any faculty? I know our faculty are always very willing to help our students. Absolutely. Build I, a resume or tweak a resume. We have we have resume workshops that yeah. are put on by the faculty That's and amazing. one of the organizations here on campus. Uh, they're very regular. You can always go any semester and tweak your resume and that's really what I would recommend is starting early just kind of get a bare bones your first semester just a nice blueprint and then fill it in from there that way when third or fourth semester you're not frantic (laughs) right once you realize you found that place that you like you can just print off what you have there right and bring it in the next uh the next clinical shift that you're there right well and I think it's uh it's something also we have our faculty advisors we each are assigned a faculty advisor good point or faculty that you really have jived with, right? right. Like yep. that you get along with. I've had different faculty that aren't my faculty advisor look through my resume because mm-hmm. they know what I'm doing or they know like, hey, I, want you, to to right, yeah, right. I want you to highlight a little bit more of this. Yeah, they know. Yeah. And yeah. as Liam said, it, I think it's important um, to get those done earlier mm-hmm. and just update them because 
fourth semester, I think that some of the first openings were that first week of first fourth semester. Week, yeah. And you want to have a letter of recommendation. Um, some places take them, some t- places don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you want to have your resume ready in PDF format for that day to, to drop go. in. Yes. Yeah. And don't so, miss those days. Yeah. <laughs> and, and professors are busy. Uh-huh. Um, mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. busy even on their month off. I'm yep. putting that in air quotes because yeah. there's no months off for them. And so, in all of fourth semester has very, there's a few professors who are very uh, high demand Man. for yeah. red or letters of rec. So like third semester, get yeah. it done. Start get asking. It done yeah. early. Or mm. like your resume can be done already. You can yes. give that out in third semester. Your letters of rec, get them done. Make those connections with professors or clinical, clinical faculty, faculty. Mm-hmm. When, you, when you have them because th- you're fresh on their mind. Mm-hmm. And then it's done right. so that fourth semester you're ready to go. Because fourth semester comes uh, fast. It comes fast. It goes fast. Right. And yeah. it's it, it, you have kind of a, f- a sixth class of finding a job. job and yeah. it takes a lot of time. And right. if you're already a- ahead of the game, you're golden. Right. So, Liam, were you going to say something? Did I see you move your hand over there? No, I'm probably just moving. <laughs> <it's moving. laughs> uh, no, I, I will good. say. Yeah, go. Um, in terms of the, uh, in terms of capstone and uh, applying for jobs and everything, they're a little bit removed from each other. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the systems already have their applications out yeah. and we're in adult three still. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we do adult three for the first six or seven weeks and then we finish adult three's class and then we start capstone. Mm-hmm. Um, Memorial Hermans was done and over by wow. that point. Yes. Texas Children's, the applications were closed by then. Right. Really? Methodist was finishing up. And so uh, I didn't, I had my job in my unit before I started my capstone in my unit. Wow. Um, and so I think it's, it's important to, to kind of, There's a balance between being ready before Capstone, because I think early on we have this idea that Capstone is where we're getting our jobs, and that's not necessarily true. But there's also the balance of knowing um, there are tons of jobs still up for grabs. Right. And it's not to say that Capstone can't be helpful for getting a job. I know people who get their jobs in Capstone. Um, I think it was always a little – fourth semester is hard because you you start hearing people having jobs. Uh And – You start comparing. You start comparing, Uh and you start to – and in fourth semester is uh, a really big transition time, and it can be really difficult. Mm-hmm. But I've tried to remind people um, of my friends who kind of have had these moments of like, I'm never going to get a job. Yeah. A lot of a lot of nursing systems, not necessarily in Houston, but a lot of them do it after they take the IGLEX. Like it right, is, a, it is right. a unique thing to have a job before you graduate nursing right, school, right. and so mm-hmm. it's not to say that there are no jobs left. Um, we have plenty of jobs available. Uh, we need nurses. We need nurses. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, it might not be exactly the job that you had. Which is a great point. Yeah, you might not get your dream yeah. job yeah, right away. I, I wanted the pick you, and I got the pick you, and that feels very much like a fluke. Mm-hmm. I You're very lucky. I'm yeah, that's very not lucky, normal. But yeah. also, I might get in there, and it might not be what you exactly what I thought, and I might transition, and everyone's always transitioning. You're probably not going to get your dream job or your forever job right away. And that's okay. Yeah. And that's okay, that's and okay. that's also probably for the best because you're not going to be as varied of a nurse if mm-hmm. you stay in one unit forever. Right. Exactly. And so I, I want to reiterate that you don't have to have a job first week of fourth semester you don't have to have a job when you graduate i hope i hope you do just for stress psych but, but <laughs> right but mm-hmm. it's it's something that it doesn't have to be your perfect job it can uh i know my my group we were really big on uh, like icus and pd uh-huh. and it was like god forbid someone gets something that's not icu and they're like oh it's just med surgeon i'm like i'm sorry that's a nursing job that's right. amazing right job. right um, but it was just this 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 idea that we had in our head i think right and uh i i think it's really important to reiterate that uh, we don't have to have it all uh, perfectly in a box right away. Right. So. Yeah. We're just starting. It's just yeah. like, you know, just a baby. Don't, don't be too hard on yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> Everyone's on their own timeline. Yeah. You can't exactly. hold yourself to other people's timelines. The important thing is you find your job and you start your journey. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's it's not a race. Like, don't no. ever, like, compare yourself with another person. No. You know, like, j- just keep it to yourself. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just be happy and be appreciative. That exactly. And that nursing school is done. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I think also all of those opportunities are a really good networking yeah. moment. Like mm-hmm. you might not find your forever home 
in a place, but you might meet someone who is going to lead you there. Right. Or uh, who knows someone who knows exactly. someone who knows someone. Yep. Right. And uh, I know we had um, a clinical experience together, all three of us were, and something I learned from that clinical faculty, she was just so good at networking. She was always go. she knew everyone, Everybody. and they knew her, and mm-hmm. she could put you in the right position um, for you to kind of figure out what you wanted, and right. she, she was so good at that, and that was something that I learned it wasn't related to, you know, her exact unit that she wanted, but she would still talk to people and get to know them and learn from them. Right. And you never know where that's going to lead. And yeah. I think that's really uh-huh. important to keep an open mind. For yes. Semester. Talk to everybody, get to know everybody. You have no idea what doors will open. Right. You're just, you have no idea who you're talking to, really. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you yeah. might know the name, but you don't know the pool uh-huh. they might have. Yeah. Be friendly. Yeah, get be to yourself. know people. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, does anybody have any final thoughts on the whole capstone Finding yeah. a job. I think I would uh, urge people to really have grace with themselves. Um, like, be kind because it is a really stressful time. Mm-hmm. And it's stressful be in a different way than nursing school was. Yeah. And it's okay to not be sh- – we all are talking about what we want to do as if we know what we want to do. Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. You don't have to know what you want to do, and you – we probably don't like we <laughs> can say I, I like this but we really don't know right and so like give yourself grace to figure that out and not be exactly perfectly where you're supposed to be right away right and just give give different pr- systems different uh units different specialties a chance because you don't know what you're gonna fall in love with right so right. just take those interviews uh be open-minded uh and s- see where you land yeah mel Yes, same thing. Like, really just open yourself up to all the opportunities out mm-hmm. there. Like, don't limit yourself to just one and sticking to it. Because, you know, you never know whether you're going to like something or not until you try it. Right, you know? yeah. And, yes, and uh, again, I uh, just want to emphasize, like, it's not a race, you know. Yeah. You know, do your own stuff. And you have your own story. You have your own story. You have mm-hmm. your own path. And, right. and make it your own, you know. Like Yeah. And, yeah, don't mind everybody else but you know of course like be be happy for them <laughs> right um, right but like yeah at the end of the day you know you have your own you have your own story to tell and right yeah focus on that liam final wise words <laughs> i don't know how wise i can be but very wise <laughs> i would say that be something that should be just as important as finding a place in a unit that you want is finding one with a culture that you like yes you vibe with them, you get along with them. If you interview with someone and you just, you know, cutting jokes, you're having a good time, it feels like you've known them forever, give that place a chance, even if it's not the the thing that you thought you wanted. Right. Um, you're spending a lot of time and it's way more fulfilling to go to a job that might not have been your first choice of specialty, but you don't hate going to. Yeah, that's important. Yep. Yeah, no, definitely. Mm-hmm. But Thank you guys for coming today, of course. chatting. This is a very exciting uh, time in your life. You are woo. wrapping up nursing school and heading on to a big, bright future. So thanks for chatting and providing some really cool insight um, for prospective students and uh, just even current students who are feeling a little anxious about this next step. So, uh, And thank you for our listeners for tuning in to another episode of UTMB Nursing School Chronicles. And make sure you check back and see what we're going to be talking about next. You've been listening to Nursing School Chronicles, brought to you by the University of Texas Medical Branch School of Nursing. For more information, please reach out to the UTMB School of Nursing Admissions and Student Affairs Office. Our number is 409-772-8271, or visit us on our website at nursing.utmb.edu. All of the opinions expressed on this podcast are the opinions of those speaking and do not reflect the policies or stances of the University of Texas Medical Branch School of Nursing in Galveston.